All right, so welcome back to Principles of Chemistry 2 Lab Online Edition. We figured instead of giving updates as to how myself and Professor Collins are doing, we might as well just highlight uh, our dogs. And so uh, my dog, Beaker, uh, has pretty much been on that same chair for the past two weeks. So that's what he's been up to. And Professor Collins' dog, Dory, has made a new friend, Sam, who is also friends with Beaker and the three, three dogs, whenever they get a chance, uh, end up playing together. But regardless, uh, we wanted to rate all three of these dogs as being very good dogs. And so we gave them all 14 out of 10. So that's our little update. Uh, this week, your uh, musical education uh, assignment is to listen to the Beatles playlist since they are our musical artist of the week. So make sure you get a chance to listen to some Beatles songs at some point over the next seven days. And then additionally, uh, we always leave the last week open-ended for audience participation week. So uh, it is your job to answer the survey and vote for who the final musical playlist uh, artist should be, and each of these uh, individuals or bands are a favorite of uh, myself, Professor Collins, Professor Pask over in uh, neuroscience, and Professor Martine over in biology. We will announce the winners next week. All right, so uh, jumping into today's lab, uh, building off of what you're covering in lecture, uh, this is a lab <clears throat> that uh, if we were in person, uh, would have involved you working in groups and uh, analyzing a bunch of data that would actually be handed to you uh, at different time intervals. Um, so we can't quite do that uh, in the online edition, but we're, we're still going to hit the same content that we would have hit <clears throat> if we were doing this in person. All right, so here's the, the big scenario. So allegations of doping have taken the 2020 Patriot League Indoor Track and Field Championships at the end of the meet, the track and field uh, athletes brag about juicing up the night before the event. And so this caught the attention of actual Patriot League Commissioner Jennifer Heppel, who demanded that all of the Lehigh athletes on the team immediately be drug tested. And so you are the analytical company. We created this fictitious analytical company, Raynell Labs, uh, tasked with determining whether or not one of those members of the Lehigh track and field team consumed illegal substances listed on the actual NCAA banned substance list <clears throat> prior to the Patriot League Indoor Track and Field Championships. And so due to the fact that Lehigh will be competing next year in cross country meets, you have a limited time to analyze the samples and determine whether or not the athlete dope. So this is a role playing type lab. This is what actual scientists would do uh, in the real world in, in the event that something like this happens. And so the breakdown, what you're going to do is analyze uh, some HPLC chromatograms from an already worked up urine sample from one of the members of the Lehigh team. And so you're going to look at things like uh, changing the variables on an HPLC instrument, primarily the, the solvent ratio that best separates uh, the compounds on HPLC. And once you separate the, the mixture, once you can actually see three distinct peaks, uh, you'll be able to determine the identity of each peak based on mass spec. Uh, and then finally, some of the substances on the NCAA banned substance list have threshold limits, meaning they are legal up until a certain quantity. So uh, you need to determine not just the identity of each component, but the actual quantity. So here's the, here's the main strategy, the main breakdown of the lab. First, you have to figure out how to separate the compounds. Then you have to identify the compounds and you have to quantify the compounds. <clears throat> All right, so these are uh, the compounds uh, that are uh, potentially one of the three that are in the uh, urine sample from the athlete broken down into banned substances and non-banned substances. And you can find a, a detailed list of the structures, which you should definitely look at, uh, on the course Moodle page under the HPLC lab uh, structures info document. So definitely have that opened up uh, as you're working through uh, the lab and the quizzes. 
All right, so part one, separation of peaks. Uh, let's say we start off with this initial HPLC chromatogram. Uh, we see that there's definitely some, some overlap in peaks uh, in this chromatogram. And so if you start off uh, running the instrument and, and got this data result, uh, you would uh, need to adjust the parameters of the HPLC so that you could actually <clears throat> get some separation between uh, these peaks. And so what you would do is continue to adjust the solvent ratios until you actually got separation. We call that developing a method uh, so that you can actually separate those peaks. <clears throat> and so looking at this HPLC chromatogram at the bottom, we see that we finally separated those three peaks by adjusting that solvent ratio. And once you do that, you can then do your calculations that you've learned in lecture, like calculating percent area, calculating the resolution, along with the plate height for each peak. Notice you can't do those calculations for uh, this essentially single peak um, because you don't have any baseline separation. You have very poor resolution um, with this uh, HPLC chromatogram. And so uh, your first goal, again, is to actually separate all three compounds out, so then you can do all these calculations. All right, so once you actually have all three components separated, we have to figure out what each of these compounds are. And the way you do that is with mass spec. So you'll get a mass spec of this peak, this peak, and this peak. It's up to you to analyze um, you know, whether or not there's uh, a parent ion present, um, what the fragmentation patterns are, uh, are there isotope, um, isotopes present uh, in your compound? So just taking everything you've learned and analyzing mass specs um, and applying it to this lab. All right, and then finally, uh, once you know what each of the compounds are, what each of the peaks are, we want to quantify those compounds. And so we're gonna do pretty much the same thing you would do as if you're running a Beer's Law lab, where you'd make a known uh, set of known concentrations, measure their absorbances, then uh, make an unknown concentration or be provided with an unknown concentration, measure its absorbance, and back calculate to figure out what that concentration is. So very, very similar setup. What you would do is inject known uh, quantities into the HPLC and uh, create a, a standard curve where one axis is your injection quantity and the other axis is the peak area. So that way uh, you inject an unknown uh, injection quantity uh, and the HPLC tells you what that peak area is. And based on the graph that you'll end up making, you can plug in the unknown peak area and get out a quantity that was actually present in the urine sample. And so based on that, you can figure out uh, whether or not um, the athlete uh, went over the limit, uh, over the threshold limit for that compound. All right, so what you'll have to do is using Excel and the data provided in the quiz is make one of these standard curves, just like you've done in lab already this year, where one of your axes is the injection quantity um, make that your x-axis, and then the y-axis is the signal or peak area, um, and then add your trend line uh, along with your um, r-squared. As it turns out, you really need uh, a really high r-squared value as close to one as possible, because if your r-squared value isn't close to one, how can you be sure that you're getting an accurate uh, amount uh, in that sample? All right, so the big question, did the Lehigh athlete cheat? That is up to you to figure out based on your data analysis, and you'll have to make a recommendation to the Patriot League commissioner as to whether or not the Lehigh athlete should be banned from competition. All right, so let's do on Moodle. First, watch this video. You get 10 points for doing that. And then read through the handout. Uh, mostly handout is just background information uh, on the scenario. Pretty much all the data analysis is going to happen in each of these three quizzes. So there's a quiz on analyzing uh, the HPLC data and trying to separate the peaks and doing those calculations. 
uh, there's a quiz on mass spec interpretation, and then there's a quiz on HPLC calibration data.